And take a deep breath in. And let it go. Another deep breath in. And let it go. Another deep breath. Breathe in. And let it go. Mm. Ah, so good morning. Um, I'm just so grateful to welcome you into this space because, as you've mentioned before, there's a group of us who've been in this space in retreat all weekend. Um, and it's the folks who've been with me on my synthesis journey who are in the chapter four class. And so they're at least two years into this material and we come together. We're mostly, mostly online. Many of us live all over the country. Um, and so we come together a couple times a year to do the work in person. And you know, one of the things we've been doing this weekend is we've been calling in the directions. We've been working with our ancestors. We've been doing a lot of deep, 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 deep work. And so one of our intentions with this morning was to really just bring the energy of what we've been cultivating this weekend here to you community as a gift to this space. Um, and to each one of us. And so all the altars are still here. Um, this altar was in the center of the room all weekend. Um, we've brought it up front to just continue to hold the space. Um, and many of you who have been here in the last couple of years might know of my beloved friend Firefly, um, who was part of that community who had an accident in Germany uh, almost two years ago. Um, and so there's an, uh, there's a, her seat is over here on the other side of, um, in the East Altar right now. She's been with us all weekend as well. Um, and so we just hold the space for her. Um, and so I really want to talk to you about kind of the deeper pieces of what this synthesis work is all about. Um, and if you don't know, just to give you the brief history, you know, I was trained as a, as a minister in religious science and centers for spiritual living. And at the same time that I started my ministerial training, um, I was introduced to and had the opportunity to become um, a student um, and mentee um, of Dr. Jean Houston, um, who is a global presence. She's one of the people who is the, one of the founders of the human potential movement. She has worked with the United Nations and peoples all over the world doing deep transformational work. And as I was in my training time, I was simultaneously being trained in religious science or science of mind or centers for spiritual living or whatever we call this thing, uh, and also in social artistry, which is Gene Houston's work. And when I came out the other side of all of these trainings, which were happening parallel, the two lines of study had kind of woven together and become something new inside of me. And so that's one of the reasons that I call the work synthesis is because it's the overlap of various teachings, not just those two, but there's many more that have been woven in. And along the way, I came across a book on New Thought and the history of this movement that we're a part of. And in there, there was a section talking about the spiritual laws that we are working with. And oftentimes, we hear about you know, spiritual laws like the law of attraction, right? We've probably all heard of that one at least. And in all of my training, I'd always learned about these laws, but no one had ever actually given us, like, here's what they are. Uh, just that so you're working with them. It's useful to know what they might be. Um, and so at some point, I came across this idea of the law of synthesis, which actually comes from literary philosophy. Right? In literary philosophy, you have two ways of discussing. There's your thesis, your argument for whatever you're talking about, and there's the antithesis, the antithesis, the argument against whatever the point is. And then there's synthesis. And the law of synthesis states that any time two seemingly different or opposing ideas are brought together, a third higher idea can be created that doesn't compromise either of the original two. Right? And I grabbed on to this law. And it has become my filter. It's become my lens. It's become the way that I think. I'm constantly synthesizing. And one of the things that I really deeply believe about the world that we live in right now, this world that seems so divisive, this world that seems so right and left, this world that seems so on this side or that side of a border or an issue or a war, there's so much opposition 
in the world that we live in. And what the world needs more than anything are people who are capable of looking at both sides of a situation and looking for the third higher idea that doesn't compromise either of the two that can bring us together. Right? And so the whole, a big piece of this work is about training us to think in overlapping circles. To think about the issues of our life, to think about the issues of the world, to think about the things you're passionate about, the things that you want to work on, and then see how those overlap, how they relate, how they connect to other issues, to other things, to other people, right? And in that overlap, something more becomes available. New thoughts, new ideas, new ways of being, right? And so we're in this constant place of generativity of bringing the newness forward. And so in the process, there's, well, there's at least 52 concepts in synthesis. I'm not going to give you them all this morning. <laughs> um, but I want to share a few of them with you. And one of the elements that we work with is this idea that we call exhortation. And exhortation is this, it's a word that means urgency, necessity, to call, to push, to, to incite forward. And so we in the synthesis community, each person is invited to choose a project something that you feel that you want to work on in your life. And then as we develop that thing, we start to look for what is the exhortation that's underneath that, right? If you're wanting to heal the disease in your body, if you're wanting to start a business, if you're wanting to fall in love, if you're wanting to write a book, why? Yeah. And not just why for you, but why for the world? What does the world need from you that this idea, this thing that is right in front of you that's yours to deal with, how is that a seed of the world that we want to create? Right? And so we each choose a project, but we follow that project. We let it evolve. We let it take us. We let it carry us. And so much of the process of synthesis is about learning to follow, learning to be led, learning to allow what is showing up as the urgency in our lives. You've often heard me say, follow your disturbance. We look at the urgency in our lives as an invitation to move towards something, right? And so often the world of news and media and fear and hype and all of that wants to motivate us by pushing us with fear. But we want to be motivated by being pulled by a vision. And so part of the work is to continuously reach forward to the vision of your life flourishing, to the vision of your project being fulfilled. And then we, can we take that even further out and we go, let's look at the world 50 years from now. Let's look at the world that we're building for the future generations. And as we keep touching that, the urgency, the power, the truth of that vision starts to wake up in us. And then we become connected to the possible future that we're calling ourselves towards, and we become drawn towards it. But if we try to push and force ourselves there, we're going to end up with the world we're currently building right now, which is not the one we want. We want to build a new world, right? Yeah. And so this exhortation, this idea of urgency, is also kind of the state of the world we live in. Right? And so we get to look at the urgency that the world is providing us, each one of us, as an invitation to step into what is ours to do. And so I want to share a brief practice with you, um, because part of the following, part of the, the deeper awareness, is realizing that there's something that's always been calling each one of us. And for us to learn how to connect with that in some way. And so I want to lead you through a practice, which is one of our core practices in synthesis. And if you're able, if you are uh, able to and, and, and want to, I invite you to stand up and find a little bit of space around yourself. If you want to move into the aisles, you can do that. And if you're watching online or you're watching the recording later, you can also stand up wherever you are and do this process with us. Um, and Lauren, if you'd be willing to just play with me as we... As we do this, it'd be great. Thank you. 
So here's what I want you to do. First is just take a moment and just center yourself. And just take a deep breath in and let go. And I want you first just to place your hands on your heart. And just bring your awareness to that heart space. We live so much of our lives in our heads, planning, wanting to make things happen. But I want to invite us to drop our attention down to our heart, to the part of ourselves that feels the pull, the part of us that falls in love, the part of us that catches the lure of our dreams and feels it. And so just breathe ever deeper into that heart space. And I want you to imagine for a moment, in whatever way you imagine, maybe you just think about these ideas, maybe it'll conjure some imagery, but imagine for a moment that every step of the way, since perhaps even before you were born, there is a current that moves through the universe that moves through your heart. And that current is also a path. It is also the way, the unique way that you walk in the world. It's who you want to be. It's the life that's calling you. It's what you're dreaming of. That current is moving through each one of us. And as we catch the current, we feel inspired. As we catch the current, we feel like we want to move somewhere. As we catch the current, we fall in love. As we catch the current, we get new ideas. As we feel the pull, as we feel the draw of that current, it moves us towards who we are becoming. So imagine that you can feel that current moving through you right now. And it goes off into the distant future, and it becomes you but it goes beyond into who you could become and it becomes the world that is becoming after us. It's becoming the world that each one of us is helping to build. And imagine that all the way down the line, you notice a presence calling you forward and it whispers back down the current, come be me. And so I want to invite you to rub your hands together And place your palms fat, flat out in front of you. And take a deep breath in. And if you are so willing, I invite you to invite that presence to come ever closer into this space, coming up the current from the future to you right now. And imagine that you could feel suddenly their hands pressing against yours. And imagine for a moment that right now you can feel as if there is a presence standing right in front of you that is the lure, that is the you that you would become, not only in this lifetime, but if you had a thousand lifetimes to become the best possible version of yourself, to live into all of your gifts, to explore all the possibilities, the version of you that is constantly saying, come be me, the one who is whispering into your dreams the vision of who you could become, they're standing in front of you right now. And in your mind's eye, just imagine for a moment what it might feel like for this one to be gazing upon you where you are in your life right now. Because this is your highest potential. But they also see you in context. They know every decision you've made and why. They see that you've never made a mistake. They see that every wrong turn has led you to the right place. This presence reminds you that you've always been on the right path, that they've always been there with you, that they've been calling you forward every step of the way, that it is this presence who called you into this world that said, come be me, come be born. It is this presence that has been calling you every step of the way, guiding your body, guiding your mind, guiding you. It's your intuition. It's that whisper. It's the lure of becoming. So take a deep breath in. I want you to reach your arms 
forward ever a little bit more. And just invite that presence, if you're willing again, to step into you right where you are. And as you do so, just take one tiny little step backwards and bring your hands into your heart. And feel that presence step in. Feel that intuition. Feel that knowledge. Feel that wisdom. Feel that love washing over you right now. And then I want you to stand up a little taller. Breathe in a little deeper. Open your shoulders. Lift your eyebrows. Smile a little bit. Open yourself. And feel yourself being inhabited by the you that you are becoming. And then feel the world that is emerging, the world that could emerge, if each one of us, if all of us stepped into our potential, if each one of us said yes to that which is ours to do, if each one of us stopped fighting and started moving, if we were stopped listening to the pain and we started listening to the vision, if each one of us stepped into the fullness of who we could be, imagine what the world would be like. Imagine what the world would be like for the future generations. Imagine what we are building, what we are creating, who we are becoming, if we would just say yes to that which is ours to do. And so just hold that for a moment. And take another deep breath in. And let go. Another deep breath. And let go. One more deep breath in. And let go. Bring your hands together in a prayer pose. I'm going to lead you in a very simple breath practice. And it is my understanding that when Moses sat with the burning bush and asked it its name, one of the translations we get is that the name, the bush, the presence of God, the voice of the universe said, I am that which I am becoming. And then he heard a name. But that name is not a word. The name is a truth. I'm going to breathe this name. And then I'm going to invite you to breathe it with me three more times. As a reminder of the truth of who we are. As a reminder that there is a current moving through each one of us. As a reminder that there is a presence that is breathing us. And so listen first. And then we're going to breathe this together three times. Breathe in with me. Again, breathe. One more breath. Breathe it in. And so, if you will, just allow that to land. If you need to sit, I invite you to sit. sit. If you're comfortable standing, remain standing. As I just remind us once again that each one of us is being breathed by something greater than we are. That there is one seamlessness, that there is one life, that there is one infinite being that is unfolding in, through, and as everything that is. It is the divine mind. It is the life of the universe. But what I know is that it is my mind. It is each one of our minds. It is the life that is living through us because there is only one of us here. We are the universe. We are the earth life. We are one global family with all of life. And what I know is that each one of us are the unique individualized ways that the allness of this possibility is bringing itself into actuality. I know that in this great glorious universe, there is a unique current that flows through each one of us. Let us open today to allow that current to carry us. Let's stop fighting. Let's, go, let's stop going against the stream. Let's start moving with the flow. Let's allow ourselves to be carried towards a world that works for everyone. Let's allow ourselves to be activated. Let's allow ourselves to be lifted up. Let's allow ourselves to become the people that we're meant to be.
so that we can live a life in celebration that life is who we are so that we can live a life of gratitude because the earth life gives us everything that we need let's learn to live in harmony so that we can be in celebration so that we can be in gratitude so that we can live in truth and in right relationship with life and then continue to surrender to that which is breathing us. Allowing ourselves to be breathed. Allowing ourselves to be lived. Allowing the more of us to show up. And so with that, I just say yes. He named me. I will answer the call. And so it is. So just take a deep breath. I'm going to invite Lori and the band back up. And I want you just to breathe. Just hold this for a minute. And I asked Lori to sing this song. Because for me, this is one of my theme songs, this dream of building a world that works for everyone, of each one of us saying yes to our dream, and those dreams weaving together to build the world that we want to see.